are we? Hope so. Okay. Keep this. Yep, we're live. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, let's see if it went out on Twitter. I tried to make it go out on Twitter. Um, don't know if it did. Uh, it doesn't look like it did. So, I'm going to put that out there. I thought I had a go live setting, but apparently I turned it off somehow, and I don't know how to uh, turn that back on. So I'm going to just put this message out there. Uh, okay. Alright. So where are we? Let's see. Session prep. Session prep within. So, well, that is a little bit old. I think I have something newer. We're in Blade Forge now. I have notes. So this game is a game of, um, it's in a world, it's in a, it's in a custom world, right? But the world is more or less inspired by Dwarf Fortress, the famous, famous um, indie game kind of procedural base building that has inspired a whole, fun fact, Dwarf Fortress was the inspiration for Minecraft actually. Notch was trying to um, kind of create a simple 3D Dwarf Fortress-like world, and it turned into this whole other thing, and, and that's aside from the fact that Notch turned out to be this whole other person. But anyway, um, so kind of the idea is that they are in what more or less corresponds to the Underdark in other worlds, but is not... Uh, uh, not underdark in the way that we think of it. It's not about drow and dwergar and whatnot. Um, it just happens that dwarves like to dwell underground. And so they started off in a city that was kind of an outpost on the surface where dwarves could trade with elves and gnomes and humans and whatnot, called, funny enough, Trader's Rock. And they found that the Reeve there, who is kind of the tax collector, kind of representative of the Duchess of the area, t um, uh, was a warlock uh, wh who was in league with Orcus and that Orcus was trying to return. And so they took the message, they're taking that message back down to Bladeforge, to the Duchess. And last week, they determined that she was, uh, they, they found evidence in this re Her name is Ridga. Ridga is the, the evil person. Uh, they found evidence that she was, in fact, uh, in dabbling in dark powers with Orcus and whatnot, um, which is interesting because one of the party members is actually a necro, a wizard necromancer, um, so that's causing some conflict. Um, so we're we're looking to see kind of. So this week everybody's back together. They found the evidence last week. They reached well, they reached Bladeforge and they found the evidence in town to be able to prove to the Duchess they had something more than just their word, right? And the letter from the captain of the guard back in that original settlement where they had found all this. So, um, um, oh, I don't need to do. I need to pull up my Trello where I do. Game prep, that's what I was missing. Okay, so they they informed Captain Gilly, Captain Gilly Hammerstone, last week. And now they've got to take that evidence there. So the um so they're gonna inform the Duchess, Duchess Unden, I think her name is. Right. Duchess Unden of Ridga's Treason because that sort of league with Orcus is definitely considered treason in this world. Um, so we're going to link to that quest, because, you know, 
that's part of that. But also, really, uh, what? Why is it not showing up there? It doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, show evidence found in Ridga's apartment, plus the letter from Captain Thag. Thag Hedison was the captain of the guard in Trader's Rock where they did this. Um, another thing to note is that the dwarves in this world more or less used the Norse pantheon, which was kind of from one of my players, um, you know, since I like players to... Uh, uh, you know, have a have a big hand in creating the world. One of the players, who was uh, oddly enough in this world, is the only one playing a dwarf. I have a dwarf, two gnomes, and two half orcs. Um, said that he wanted his character to worship Thor, and so I just took that and ran with that. So um, his character actually is trying to find Yarn Graper, which is the gauntlets of Thor. Um, so. What are some potential... So I like to more or less use the Lazy Dungeon Master ideas from Mike Shea, Sly Flourish. Um, I don't use them exactly, exactly. I, mean, I use them the way that works for me, which I think is uh, uh, what he would what he would encourage there. So um, they already reached Blade Forge, so I can uh, archive this one. Um, what are some potential scenes? So definitely they're going to... They they told me last week they're going to have an audience with the Duchess. They 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 wanted to wait till the next day um, since they had already done what they needed to do. Um, the Grim Grimlock Rampage. Now that they've reached the city, is far less important. Dwarf in a strange mood is interesting because a dwarf, in Dwarf Fortress, a dwarf in a strange mood, they go they kind of get possessed with the idea that they want to build a certain artifact and they look for the materials for that artifact and they go lock themselves off in a workshop and, and, and create it. And if they can't find that material or a relevant workshop, then they go mad and crazy and it causes all kinds of disturbances. So if things are getting boring, I can throw that in there. Similarly, a Forgotten Beast is any sort of kind of large, um, potentially city-threatening monster um, again, it's just, that's a kind of a thing in my back pocket to that uses the Dwarf Fortress-inspired world, but also if things are getting bored, I can shake things up, give them something to, to deal with. Um, they want to have, though, they informed me a few weeks ago, less of a focus on combat and, and kind of dungeon-type exploration, um, which is funny because originally this was going to be all tracking down artifacts and hunting monsters. Um, and they've kind of built a lot of their characters around that, most of them, except for one or two. And now they kind of all, even the character who, like, in when I ask him what his character wants, he says that he his character wants to fight monsters the bigger the better. But when I ask him what he wants as a player, he wants, like, the opposite of that. So it's an interesting irony here that I don't really know quite how to handle. Um, potential scenes, they also might want to talk to the High Cleric. The High Cleric is Britha, who is this person here. I need to find, uh, well, I don't need to find art for her. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I go on, like, Pinterest and find um, kind of art that speaks to me about how I visualize this person. But I have, so I use Don John for generating a lot of things and one of those things that I like to generate are NPCs and I s select the appropriate race in this case a dwarf but sometimes I don't some like so for example in this city the the um head of the warden so we kind of have internal law enforcement internal of the city which is the city guard city watch which is run by this Captain Gilly Hammerstone that they've already met. And then there's the wardens who are responsible for everything kind of outside of the city itself. And in this case, that's a half-orc. Um, in my world, the, the races don't have innate alignments. They don't have necessarily... They don't have necessarily racial animosities, right? The way that traditional... I, I want to get away from that. I think that is um, a little bit of a holdover of past attitudes 
by various authors and game creators in the old days and we've kind of stuck with it but there's not really a reason for that right so um you know like one of my half orcs he just comes from a a tribe of half orcs um half orcs is probably not even a good name for them they're just i mean they are they're not quite they're not humans exactly they're not orcs exactly they're in between someplace the other half orc um the character was is raised by his mother and stepfather both of whom are humans and were actually evil necromancers um but the origin the unspoken origin of his parentage is not dealt with um the one thing that i'm hoping to avoid are some kind of the worst tropes that often accompany that i really want to stay away i mean here and i've told my players this and i think they're all on board um i have a relatively diverse well no we have some diversion not as much diversity as i'd like but you know we're not all male we're not all straight etc etc um although we tip mostly are straight white dudes anyway we're trying to you know branch out a little bit the idea being that this is kind of escapism. We play, we shoot for every Sunday afternoon. It turns out to be about every other Sunday afternoon. Um, and this is an escape from the real world. We have enough difficulties in these kind of modern dark ages now. So I want to get away from that. I want to be able to, you know, just explore this fantastic world. And it has its own, pr I mean, listen, there's enough pressures in a world where there are all these monsters that want to kill you and necromantic artifacts that want to steal your soul and so forth. They don't need to, and, and, and certainly there are bad people in the world. Like, they, there are factions that jockey for power and sometimes do bad things. And so it's not that there's not evil in the world. It's that the evil isn't aligned along kind of racial or or uh certainly you know we homophobia isn't really a thing my elves are all gender fluid is probably the closest word to it in it, the idea is they just have a lot of different genders and they flip between them but they're like defined genders like maybe maybe if if society today is just kind of starting to really grapple with the fact that gender is a spectrum and it's not just binary then the elves are thousands of years past that they kind of understand to some granular detail how it works and nobody else in the world does so all elves when speaking to other people just use kind of the gender neutral singular they um i've struggled with this this is part of me trying to work through that right um of making sure that i am you know respectful and not just tolerant but accepting like and this is a way for me to deal with that issue myself right is to try to uh, you know, kind of practice that and think about using these sorts of identities to tell stories in ways that are not kind of um, aligned to historical real-life perspectives. That's really what I'm trying to do there. Um, so, all that to say that in this city, while it is a dwarven city, it is a dwarven feudal society, so there's some problems that come with that. It's not a perfect world by any... It is not, not a utopia. But I try to get away from the traditional tropes. That's really what I'm trying to say here. So, um, Seiko is the leader of the Wardens, if they go to her. Um, what they're going to want to do after they talk to the Reeve, I suspect, though, is talk to Britha, the High Cleric, who she worships herself, Odin, but kind of the Norse pantheon, the... The, is this is the Aesir, the I forget, or just Vanir. The Aesir, yeah, the Aesir, so she kind of worships like Odin and Thor and so forth. Odin is her primary god, right? That's that's kind of who she is devoted most devoted in service to. But in reality, all Thor is is Odin's son, and therefore she, to, in that respect, um, you know, worships. Thor as as well. It's not a monotheistic culture by any stretch. So, so, so while she might think of herself as a as a cleric of Thor, um, kind of that whole uh, that whole setup, that whole pantheon, she is she is okay with. Um, hope I'm. I was moving my cord around. Hopefully I'm still sounding okay. Um, let's see. Do a quick. Oops. On pause. Yep, sounds like it. All right. So, um, with that said, what else do I need to deal with this time? I am going to... Uh, what I want to do is... Potential scene. 
um, speak with Britha about return of Orcus, possibly Yarn Graper, which are again those gauntlets of Thor. And the way that I have this is is that um, she is a, a position of kind of the church. She's not really supposed to know where they are. Where they actually are, and I've given them some kind of visions of this in the past, um, that there's this Temple of Lightning, which is where Yarn Graper sits. And the Temple of Lightning is a dungeon that I created. I used a map from Dyson Logo, so I mean, I didn't create this part, right? I've kind of more or less mapped it out, and there's these skill challenges. They have to, you know, cross these bridges here, and there are some complications there about the bridges might sit on fire, or they kind of get swarmed by these uh, monsters, these kind of, they're basically demons, demon bats with humanoid heads um, from, from Volos, is it? Yeah, from Volos here. So that's the idea. They're basically, you see what look like bats, but instead of bat bodies, they have humanoid heads. And they're pretty terrible. They're, they're actually more <sighs> kind of frightening than they are actually dangerous, uh, except when you're on a bridge, bad things can happen when you're on a bridge above what you think is lava and they're trying to be mud. Um, it's very hot and steamy and they're not going to be able to see it very well um, and they're going to think that it's lava, but it's actually um, bubbling mud and it's going to be hot. It's not going to be great for them, but it's not like falling into lava where you would immediately like die. Um, within, when they get there, there's going to be an altar with a, a uh, pentagram um, and then the they can get the uh, gauntlets there. Okay, and the gauntlets mechanically not that powerful. Mechanically, they're an uncommon item that sets the strength higher. Um, but in roleplay terms, they're super important. And in fact, they are part of sort of a set. Uh, I mean, in D and D, they're part of a set. There's the the, the gauntlet, the belt, and I think there's the hammer. Um, and I'm eventually going to get him all of those, or at least that's kind of the 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 the, the plan. Um, okay. Um, oops, didn't mean to close that. So rewards. Oh, if they when the audience, the Duchess, um, audience with the Duchess. Good job with your uh, grammar there, Maxwell. Um, as a reward, she gives has them has her I don't know servant whatever um, give them a bag of gold with. 200 platinum pieces. Bag of platinum, then, I guess. Um, which is 2,000 gold. But it's kind of a little bit of a flavor. You know, they can, they kind of do party loot, because, I mean, we're all friends. This is not an Adventures League game like my other campaigns. Um, so, I think one of them kind of does the accounting for them. I let, once I hand over the treasure, it's for the, on them to deal with. Um, I don't keep track of it. I trust them when they're, say, they're spending stuff, and I say, oh, well, that's going to cost this amount. I mean, I could, we're, we use D&D Beyond, so I could go see their characters, right, in here, but I trust them. Why is Thur just not leveled up to six? Oh, because he likes to do his, I remember now, the player likes to do his <laughs> His character events on paper and then transfer it later to D&D &D Beyond. I'm um, just like so occasionally I look at it. I want to make sure that when I give them scrolls, that they are not scrolls that they already have, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I trust my players for their um, uh, to do what they're supposed to do. Right? This is not an adversarial kind of a game. I don't. Somebody asked me the other week if. Uh, you know, how I feel about online dice rollers. Where I'm like, I never look at my players' dice rolls anyway. And they say, well, how do you know if they're cheating? I mean, I don't like to play with people who I think might be cheating. And even when I play in organized play, I'm not looking for that kind of... If it was like somebody always makes their saves and they always roll 20s or 19s and, and whatever, then I might, you know, kind of question it. But it's... I, I, I would try not to get into that situation. Right? I mean, I just try to, 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 you know, kind of trust the people and hope for the best, um, at least within D&D, &D, not necessarily in all the rest of life. Um, but here, 
as I have noted. This is kind of our, our bastion of, of love and friendship. Um, and, and so I don't uh, want to be kind of creating that table dynamic where the, the I mean, the whole world is trying to kill them in in, in, the, in D&D, right? Um, as I tell them, I am a fan of their characters and I am a fan of the players. The monsters are not, and my responsibility is to play the monsters and to play the world, um, some of whom are allies, right? But uh, many of them are not. And so that's kind of what I'm, what I'm looking for here. Um, okay, so all that to say, they, if they are kind of looking for things to do, there is a, a Kruthic Warren that I kind of want them to be able to go find. I don't know what that Warren is going to look like, though. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to Dyson site. And let's first see if we have like a hive, a hive map, a demon's hive. That sounds... Zalen's Hive, Hive in the Cave. I like to just kind of open a few of these and then see what uh, see what I find. It's possible. I wouldn't I don't necessarily describe them like square by square with this game. This is not a game that we don't use Roll20. We, we sit in Google Hangouts and we look at each other like this and we roll, you know, physical dice on our individual tables. Some of them are together physically because we're across the country. So there are three players that are in the same city and they get together and the other three of us are in different states, different time zones, everything. So, um, you know, we just do that. And I don't just, you know, okay, so you kind of go into this and you see that and, and whatever. Um, but it's much more abstract. But I like to have a kind of a feel for myself as I'm looking at it. Something like this is much better already because, you know, you go through this hive, you're going to see an opening to the right, and I kind of just describe it narratively, and it turns out that's a dead end, and then you kind of, or if you go forward, it splits, and you go down these things, and whatever. And finally, that is a super cool map, and I love it, but it is not going to work for this. So, this is going to use Zalen's hive. Um copy image address I can drop that right in here see as well as the the map or link to the um, thing anyway um, so that's good so I've got that if they go down there and I'll describe that and I should give them some sort of a magic item if they do I think if they fight their way through that then I think it's time for the a barbarian to get a new uh, something. He's got a weapon. Um, something rare. Um, give him an amulet, maybe? Amulet of health. Well, maybe something not rare. Maybe something uncommon. Those are just kind of tiers of, of whatever. Um... They have a bag of holding balloon pack. Contains the spirit of an aeromental in a compact leather balloon. You can it's basically like giving you feather fall. Oh that's fun. Um, boots of the wait, boots of striding and spring and your walking speed becomes thirty feet and your speed isn't reduced if you were encumbered. You can jump three times. That's not gonna help I mean he he doesn't wear armor, he's a barbarian. I haven't given him anything in a while. Um, that's what I want to do is something for him. Um, not a cloak. I mean, he's a half orc. He walks around. He intentionally walks around like topless, right? He's got like all this ritual scarification and and tattoos that tell stories on him. Um, honestly, what I think happened is the player who does have a lot of tattoos in real life, a lot of ink. I think saw the description of that barbarian subclass. What is that? The Herald or Path of the Herald? I think something like that. I can look and see. Um, half orc barbarian. <sighs> what is he? Come on, D and D Beyond. D and D Beyond. Um. He went. He chose the path of the ancestral protectors or something. Whatever. It's funny how it doesn't list that, isn't it? I'm missing something here. Barbarian. 
Um, what happens if I look at it through the PDF version? Does that do anything? Ancestral protectors. It's funny how it doesn't actually say here. I'm probably missing it. It's probably something obvious. Let me go to classes, official barbarian. Path of the Ancestral Guardian. Okay, that's what it is. So, because he likes the Path of the Ancestral Guardian, he's like, well, we're uncovering these elaborate tattoos that celebrate... I think that was the hook that got him, because the player himself has lots of ink, and that's why he... Uh, I think that's why he kind of identifies with it. Which is cool. Um, Alright. What else can... I gave Eyes of Minute Scene to the to one of the wizards. Um there's Gem of Brightness. Bright light. You know, it wouldn't be terrible if he had something that gave him some ranged ability or some he they could use some healing in case the cleric is down. I don't know. Mask of the Beast. Give him animal friendship. Might like that. Maybe. Maybe. Periapt of health. I mean that's cool. It's it's probably not going to come up that much. But uh, give the periapt of health. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's good. It'll feel good for him. Like as a, uh, reward periapt of health plus some gold. Um, and I can go to the DMG here from Handy Dandy D and D Beyond. Uh, I could have just rolled for the horde here, but I wanted to kind of um, look at this a little bit. Okay. Uh, treasure Horror, Challenge 5 to 10. Um, either, I'm not just going to give them coins. I'm going to... This other stuff. Did I leave my... Di I did leave my dice over there. I'm either playing dice or already sitting out, but that's fine. That's okay. Um, all right, so we're going to roll a d100 from this table. Okay. We have enough here for a d100. That is a 35, which is 10, so it's going to be 500 gold and gems. I don't like to, if they ask, I can do that. I can, plus... 500, oops, in gems, and what else is this going to, oh, wrong way, um, this says 1d6 times on magic table A, again, if they ask what kind of gems, I can find out, but, uh, where are the magic tables? Random magic items, here we go. Okay, so this is going to give them some... So I'm going to say there's a drift globe there. They could use a drift globe. I think they all have dark vision. I think it doesn't matter. Um, but the daylight spell might come in handy. Is day, No, daylight is not sunlight. So that's not going to matter too. like if they did run into a creature that has sunlight sensitivity, that's not going to be as hopeful as I thought. So I will instead give them uh, two potions of greater healing. I just kind of want to get a sense of what's there. 2x potion. I can spell, really. For greater healing. Okay. They might go there. If they don't go to that dungeon, that's okay. 
what I think they are. So, oh, I also wanted to have them to have the ability, if they so chose, to take bounties on wanted criminals. I think that there is a relevant generator here. If not, I'll make something up, and that's okay. Adventures, quests. Um, okay. So, is there anything here? An angry elven lady seeks a company that wants to expose a corrupt aristocrat who serves the hag. Thwart the monstrous... Oh! I know who they might talk to. Okay, they're relevant, relevant, relevant. Um, um, they might discuss Ridga with identified contacts like I think it was Krunarv I'll check the spelling before the game it doesn't really matter for now um, the important thing is that they know that she hung out with this other noble and he is actually a spurned lover and can become an ally though he starts at indifferent for kind of the social interaction rules in 5th edition. Um, what is he like? Let's find out. Um, random generator here for him. Nope, nope. NPC. Dwarf. Oh, no, that's not what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the NPC generator I created that uses the um, tables from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, yes, except I do not want him to be chaotic. Oh, this is perfect. Captive better by romantic interest. Okay. So, um, save that for now. I want to add a card here. Krunarv, again, I will, f I had kind of come up with this this guy on the fly last time um, as a name only former lover of Ridga it's a common theme with her um, currently indifferent because he to the party still carrying a torch for her if they can bring him over to f their side, as it were, if they can get him to align, um, then he can kind of be their eyes and ears within kind of the noble community, and um, he can belong to the uh, uh, Velvet Gauntlet. Yeah. Member of the Velvet Gauntlet. And it says, reminder to myself... Oops. There we go. That is the faction. So I used a faction generator online from Chaotic Shiny. That's the name of the name of the site. Um, and I kind of came with this. I tweaked it a little bit based on my needs for Blade Forge. There are a number of factions in the city, and one of them is this Velvet Gauntlet, right? Um, and this is he's a member of them he so he's not necessarily aligned with the current duchess um he wants to they want to influence and kind of choose from among themselves um it will take time for him to, for them to kind of dig, dig into that um the bloody cloak are uh a merchant's faction um who Want, want things to be kind of safe in the uh, area. Safe for business, obviously. Um, yeah, the Green Blades are the, are the Wardens that I mentioned. Oh, I should. Uh, link there. I like to have links between the cards so that I don't have to go finding it later. If I'm looking at them for some reason. Um... There we go. Goals to take control of the Vela Gauntlet. So she is going to be working it so that they don't know is that she is actually back in the city. 
Yes. And she is trying to take over the Velvet Gauntlet uh, via her cult, which is the cult of Orcus, effectively. So, I mean, really, I'm preparing to improvise. I don't really know what they're going to do after they talk to the Duchess. The Duchess is going to reward them. Um, she's going to tell them that they are a credit to their so to the society and whatnot, and that she is sure that in the future, you know, loyal adventurers like themselves could be useful to her, blah, blah, blah. They, I mean, I don't know how they're going to align, right? They might decide they like the Duchess. They probably will, at least at first. It's not a reason, reason not to. But I think what they're going to find is that she is the titular head, but that there's all these other things going on, and depending on who they talk to, right, if they go talk to um, somebody like Krunarv, Kruvarn, Krun, Kronarv, I don't remember, um, from the Velvet Gauntlet, then they might kind of be attempt to be swayed in that direction. If they go talk to any merchants at all, there's going to be kind of some mysterious, like, well... Um, you know, we're, we're concerned about the safety in this area that could lead them over to the Green Blades, right? Who are responsible for the security of... The, and they already have dealt with... Uh, run across the unfortunate corpses of Green Blades who died um, out of the wilderness. They were coming, coming down the road and they found where there had been this um, rock fall that had killed a bunch of dwarves with the uh, uh, patches of the Green Blades of two green um, crossed axes. And the idea was they had died, like, um, dealing with some undead, right? So they kind of died heroic deaths or whatever, um, and they accomplished their, their goal. And the cleric was kind of appropriate about, you know, laying them to rest and, and all of that. And that was a whole, that was a whole thing. Um, and they have re dealt with uh, a couple of uh, what they didn't know were agents of the Velvet Gauntlet already. They were really members of the uh, City Watch, um who had kind of gotten, given them a warning to quit sticking their nose into business where where they shouldn't. Okay. So I feel like I'm as set as I'm going to be. The they, I know what's going to happen in the audience with the Duchess. I know the reward they're going to get. Um, if they go talk to Britha, um, Britha is going to kind of um, look strangely at Oscar the Cleric and tell him she has <laughs> she has dreamed of him her her it's not it's not a um, sexy times dream um, I don't deal with that too much. I mean occasionally the players like oh my like one of my players his he plays this um, rogue gnome female and um, one day after they were uh, waking up in the inn he announced to us that um, she had slept with the bartender the night before and she was doing the kind of the walk of the shame out of the uh, bartender's um, uh, domicile. And that's fine. I mean, it was not in any way graphic. It was just, that was the joke. Um, <laughs> I later on have made that uh, bartender a wanted criminal, but um, uh, when they got to this city, they found the bartender back in the previous city. So, I don't know what's going to come with that. Maybe, uh, maybe they're going to look into that. I don't know. We'll deal with it. Um, this is the hook to get to the Temple of Lightning. Okay. I feel like I'm as set as I'm going to be. Again, what I the, the thing is that because I don't know what they're going to do, and I don't really... I mean, I, I have found every time that I'm super nervous going into a game because I don't really know what's going to happen, it turns out fine because I either... Get, they spend much more time role-playing amongst themselves, which is great. Or they go in a direction I didn't anticipate anyway, right? And I have to be able to kind of make stuff up. So between Don John, between Xanathar's for... Um, if I need to make up names or, or encounters or whatever. Sometimes I use encounter builders from other things. Um... You know, if I suddenly need to make up some dwarf names, boom, boom, bada, boom, here I am. Um, or I, you know, go to Don John and I, I do it from the uh, random NPC generator. And then I just kind of track things with different cards in Trello 
as as I go. Um, again, this one I can archive because they're not getting there. They're in Blade Forge. I have this whole document here of factions and districts and key NPCs. Um, to add, I'm. In, I started doing this in this document, and then I moved over to to Trello for most things. Um, and I should probably come up with some more um, kind of pre-created random tables, so that when they do stuff, I can just kind of roll a handful of dice. And I might do that um, for next time. It's gonna be after today. It's definitely gonna be at least two weeks before we can play again, because I will be traveling next Sunday for work um, for some stuff. So we're not gonna be playing next Sunday anyway. So this is good. This is what I what I needed. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, and uh, hopefully this will go well tonight. Hope you're having fun uh, rolling dice yourself. Talk to you later. Bye.